Uh, the puppy tried to eat a bag of patterns that reminded me that I've been meaning to make this video for um, holster patterns I have for Smith & Wesson J-frame revolvers. Um, there's a whole series of them and a lot of other small um, small framed 5-shot 38 caliber revolvers are very similar in size and might fit this. But anyway, um, the one I'm going to work on is I've got one set up for a cross draw pancake style. And I also have a pancake style one that's um, straight. They're both going to be made the same way. So I'm just going to make the cross draw one for the video. But the other one is basically the same idea. There may be other videos involving different ones because I have one here with a thumb break. And one that's just a regular belt loop style. But for right now, I'm going to probably do this one and then digitize the patterns. And as um, I usually do, I'm going to do this as a lined holster, which means I'm going to use two thinner layers of leather, in this case, four to five ounce, which is pretty commonly what I use for holsters. And I'll cut uh, my front pieces and then I'll just rough cut my back pieces. And trim them later to match after I get them put together. I'm going to use the same pattern piece for that, just flipped over. Uh, which is also how you would make this a left-handed holster. You'll just use the same pattern pieces and flip them over. And then you've got a left-handed piece. So same way, flip that one over. And let's go ahead and just rough cut. Just let's take the round knife and cut all this out. Now the alternative to this would be that you could use um, eight to nine ounce leather and just a single layer of it for the front and a single layer for the back, as opposed to using the four to five. I'm using a 3 8 inch hole punch for a couple of these corners and then the ends of the belt holes. And that's just so that I can cut by cutting out from this hole and I don't leave a little nick on the inside that's going to be a, a a tear spot, a stress spot. spot. And if the corner is too tight to get a good cut on, you can always go back to it. Just cut it off kind of square and then go back and round it out. I normally do things is I will cut these belt loop holes on the front piece, but not bother cutting them on the back pieces yet, or even on the um, lining pieces. So I'll just, as I put everything together, I'll just keep cutting out using this as a guide so that they all match from here on out. If you try and cut them ahead of time, like you try to cut this one and this one, you're going to be sitting there trying to get it to twist and turn and pull just right to line up. And it's probably never going to line up both of them all the way the way it's supposed to be. Do a little bit of stitching grooves around here. Because I'm lining this, I'm going to stitch around the edges pretty much all over the place so that I will have um, like this piece sewn to the lining piece behind it. Uh, if you're doing it out of just eight to nine and not the two layers of four to five, you don't need to necessarily do a stitching groove there. You'll just do the stitching where it actually overlaps here. I also have some stitching lines marked on here that's gonna actually make the holster pocket itself. And to mark those, I am just going to use my scratch all and poke through along those dotted lines. And I'm just going to take a freehand stitching groover, which you don't necessarily have to have. You can kind of freehand with a regular stitching groover. Um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and run this up and around. And I'm just sort of gonna follow my little line of dots. So let's go ahead and put some stamping on this and get it ready to color. Now, on this one I'm just going to do a quick pattern. It's one of my favorites. It's just going to be a meander border pattern and fill in some. I've done several videos. I've explained how to do this pattern. Um, I think I might have did one specifically just on how to do this pattern. But anyway, I'm going to lay it out and do this pretty quick. I'll probably just go ahead and speed through it on this video because like I said I may link you a, a video of uh, in the cards of how to do it a little bit more in depth well, yeah, once we get our lines cut with our swivel knife we'll have the finicky part of this pattern done Now, it is tricky on these curves because you're going to wind up trying to figure out how to get where you want to be on those. But uh, I've usually found that it works best to work on the inside of the curves first and leave about a tool's width apart. And then just sort of let the outside of the curve sort itself out. There, I'm gonna go ahead and get some dye and finish on these pieces. I'm just using a light brown um, professional oil dye. I think it's sold as pro dye now. I've got an old bottle of it though, so it still says professional oil dye on it. Okay, so it's probably only been a few seconds for y'all, but it's been a couple weeks for me because I got away from this project and had to do with some other ones. So I've got a different camera set up and a bit different angle. We'll see if it works as well as I'm hoping it will. But anyway, I'm going to finish up this holster project. And it looks like where I'm at on it is glue up. Now that it's starting to dry, we just go ahead and stick these together. And that will be ready to trim the pieces next. This one's still a little glossy. I'm going to give it just a few more minutes so it sticks right. Okay, now that's looking a bit more like it should. We're going to go ahead and stick those together. Alright, next step is to trim these off, and for that, I'm going to punch some holes along some corners. Maybe that one? Yeah. And then we can use trim knife and round knife or whatever, utility knife, to trim the leather off. I made myself a specific trim knife for the job. Now, since this is lined and I have to stitch all the way around the outside edge to keep the liner from separating, or at least that's the best way to do it. Uh, some people line holsters and just glue them together, but I prefer to stitch it. But anyway, I want to do some of the stitching and finish up the edges that are going to be like the holster mouth and the toe of the holster before I put it all together. And then I'm going to uh, do the rest of the stitching and finish up the last of these edges because this will all shift and move a little bit as you stitch it. And you want to get that perfectly neat 
you want to go back and sand it smooth. So yeah, I'm going to do some stitching, sanding, edge finishing, more stitching, sanding, edge finishing. pieces I've got this edge you can see it's sanded even to match the rest of them are not um, and that's all I'm really going to finish right now because I want these edges to all match and line up later I'm going to be sanding them again so they don't really need to match perfectly now uh, but these right here need to be finished up and I can do a little bit more beveling on the front But for now, I gotta come back and do some more of that later. Let's just go ahead and bevel. Got a problem child there in the corner. Let's best bevel right along there where I've stitched these. And that's all that's gonna need to be beveled on the back of these because everywhere else I want them to line up square with the other piece. I don't want that beveled edge to make a dip in um, where I'm going to be sanding the edges later. And how I've been finishing a lot of edges on holsters and such lately is with this um, first uh, some show brown pro dye. Make a nice dark edge. Hello, Pepper. How are you? Yeah. And then once we've got the dye on it, we can go ahead and use some gum trag. Gum trag you can add some edge burner, sure, you can use tokenol, there's a lot of different options, just wax for people using saddle soap, but I don't think that holds up over time as well. Um, lots of different options. have a nice glossy smooth edge. I do just use a cheap 1x30 sander 
to sand these edges smooth. I don't often film it um, because it's kind of messy and noisy and in a room that's not very photogenic. Just take and melt back the ends of our threads everywhere they show up. And we can do our final edge beveling. Get all the areas. We didn't get before or they got squared back up by sanding it. Alright, we also need to finish punching out our belt slots. And for that, it's just a 3 8 inch punch. At either end. And then cut between them with a trim knife or a round knife or a utility knife or whatever you want to use. going to go ahead and finish up these edges. Now that I've got them all beveled and got the holes all punched. So just like before, we're going to gum drag everything and slick it all down nice and smooth. Are you growling at a soccer ball? My dog is currently growling and barking at a soccer ball. Alright, now that everything is pretty much finished up, Let's go ahead and wet this down and shape it to the blue gun that I have for this particular type of revolver. And we'll find out if it fits like I want it to. Okay, now let's go ahead and slide this fella in here. Now mostly on this type of holster when you're shaping it, you have to be somewhat careful not to get too much retention on it uh, by either shaping down over the back of the cylinder or into the um, trigger guard of the revolver. You can make the holster fit really tight that way. But you do want a little bit in there. Just kind of a little bit of grab to it. Anyway, that's just about done for this project. I'm going to let it dry all the way. And meanwhile, I've got a dog who thinks I'm not paying enough attention to her today. <laughs> 